So you want to play Sorcerer differently, but how? What actually works? In this video, I'm going to showcase a bomb silk that I've been using for the past three months or so, which is incredibly fun. Hey guys, it's Dan, and welcome back to Unified Gaming. Now, as I said, this is a bomb silk. So first out of the gate, what does this do and where can you use it? This basically pulls lots of people in one place and unleashes absolute chaos and just floors loads of people really quick. Really fun, really effective. And it has enough burst to nuke a person quite easily. So really, really good. I use this mainly in Battlegrounds and I use this on the PCEU server for those people curious. So that's PCEU. Battlegrounds is where it works incredibly well, but you can use this in Cyrodiil and Imperial City respectively as I show on stream from time to time. As with the build itself, I'm going to show a superstar just giving you all the sets and everything you need and I'm going to go through in just a moment actually break it down for the gear the stuff and why I'm using what I'm using the traits and stuff so you have a better idea and how to do this yourself so if you like this new format do let me know down below and as always make sure that you do like and you are subscribed for future content so you don't miss out and a huge thank you to all the people on patreon as for the build though what are we doing well I'm a Breton mainly for sustain the Breton passives gives you loads of regen and the AOE skills we use are expensive. It's really simple. If you're not a Breton, you can use this with other stuff. Just change glyphs. It does work. Uh, Mundus wise, you probably saw we're using the Achenok for more sustain. Really simple. And I have all more points in Magicka, but you can change some of these for health if you want more survivability. Our regen is about 1700 with um, a potion and stuff. It can go a bit higher, so it's not massively low, but not really high either. And our spell damage goes about four and a half thousand when we're buffed up fully. So pretty decent with typical um, sort of armor ratings for a light armor build. For the food and kind of consumables, I use sugar skulls for health, magic, and stamina. And if you are a vampire, then don't panic. The max stats are just really, really helpful. If for some reason you have sustain issues, you can use uh, Witch Mother's Potent Brew. It's not as good as uh, sugar skulls in my opinion. Or you could use the gold version, which is really expensive, and I wouldn't advise that. But that is an option should you need more sustain. As with potions and sustain and stuff, I actually use tri potions. Tri potions basically cover every basis should you run out of resources. They are kind of the go to, in my opinion. Alternatively, you can use things like Essence of Immovability if you wish, but that's personal choice. For the skills and kind of what we're doing here, um, skill wise, it's pretty simple. Shock Ring. Dejic Tomb, Haunting Curse, Twilight, Endless Fury, and Suppression Field. Really quickly, Shock Ring is your AoE spammable. I have tried with the Fire one, so I know a few people go, what about the Inferno Staff? Because you get the bonus execute, and in all honesty, the damage is not worth it. Like, the bonus is so little and so situational, it's not worth it. And you're actually better spent with just using the Shock one, because you can, like, heavy attack easier and... It's also got a scaling with more people in an area for bonus damage, so you can just benefit from it more. As with the Dejic Tomb, I personally use this because I can do this at range. So you can chuck this out, they arm instantly and they do crazy damage individually. When you get people hit two or three of them, it's just a stupid burst, so it's really, really good. And as we use Dark Convergence, as you probably saw earlier, this basically means people always hit at least one, maybe two if we're lucky, and if we're really lucky, three, which is just hilarious. Stupid damage. I use Haunting Curse because this times perfectly with our mine combo, and I use Twilight for Burst Heal plus just a pet to annoy people. Endless Fury is the execute that we can chuck on before we do the kind of combo, and it really, really hurts people. Then we have Suppression Field, which basically is negate and it does damage, so you can pull people into the area with this and stop them healing as most heals are magicka in this game. So really, really offensive front bar. As with the combo, I do Haunting Curse typically, then I do Endless Fury, then I cast Dagic Tomb. This will proc the Dark Convergence, pour them into the tomb, and then this goes off, Haunting Curse goes off, Endless Fury procs of the low health, and if not, we spam Shock Ring in the area just to do more damage to try and trigger that explosion of Endless Fury, which will then kill them, and then we proc Fisher's Death. So it all works really well together. As with the back bar, I'm using Bounder Storm for armor, Streak to get away, Empowered Ward, and this is an unusual one, 
but I found this was more useful for sustain than the larger shield because the larger shield just got took off too quick because our health isn't too high. So, you know, play around with this. Twilight once more and Critical Surge. I then have Life Giver as the ultimate as a good oh no button should we need. As with the armor pieces, we're using Vicious Death, Restoration Stuff for Potentes, but this can be a special weapon of choice. Balorg, Dark Convergence, and Vicious Death. The Vicious Death and Dark Convergence can be in any loadout that you wish. So you could have, you know, Jewelry of Dark Convergence or Vicious Death and vice versa. Same with the armor pieces too. Monster set wise, I'm using Balog for that big ultimate, but if you want more kind of consistent damage, you can change it to Magma Incarnate. So that is a really good option should you wish. As with Vicious Death, you can swap this for Plague Break for more kind of consistent damage and less of an AoE bomb, but it's just an option there if you wish. It's not as good as my opinion, but it, you know, it does work. The key thing to note with the armor is that you want a lightning staff on the front bar. That is the best, in my opinion, from testing this heavily for the past three months. And that's what you really need to worry about. Stack damage, all divines, all magicka, all spare damage. If you need more sustain, chuck on a regen glyph and you're good to go. As with the CP, um, it's pretty simple in the superstar, but for those people curious, master at arms for more just direct damage done. Bite an aura for more AoE damage, Ocalate Overload for just more bomb, and Ironclad or a one of choice for just defense. For the red ones, we are using Bastion. This gives us bigger shields and we do more damage to shield people. Survival Instincts, which gives us just cheaper cost reduction because you always have status effects on you and stuff and just dots. And then Relentless, just for when we CC break, we get major protection. And there's a spare one of choice. I personally like using Seller 2, I think it's pronounced. Um, just more speed is really helpful in PvP, especially on a bomb build where you're trying to escape. For the green CP, it's really up to you, but Rationer is quite useful to keep food last longer, saves you money. War mounts are kind of good no-brainer, and Steed's Blessing is really good too. I also like having um, access to like Gifted Rider and stuff if you want to put points in here, so the green's up to you. But that's pretty much the build itself. Um, there isn't really anything else you need to know other than it does what it says in the tin. You basically chuck out Haunting Curse, Mines and blow people up. It's really that simple, but it's really fun. Um, just the last question, which I know I get asked quite often, should I be a vampire or a werewolf or neither? Um, with the sustain, it's quite tight as it is. So if you go vampirism, you will need to drop some sort of damage for sustain, but you do become much more tankier as a result because of the undeath. So that is an option should you wish. But in all honesty, that is the build. There's not much to it. The video is much shorter. Um, if you want to see more gameplay, there's actually going to be a link to some raw gameplay that I was testing about three months ago, just in the description. So you can check that. And all of those things are done for people who support us on Patreon. So they get to see it early. No, they got to see it three months early. So it's uh, quite early. So if you want to see videos early and stuff, then you know, let me know that by supporting on Patreon and stuff. But yeah, I'm just going to wrap the video up here. So I'm going to say uh, thanks for watching. And take care, guys. And bye.